edition. Um, this is also a first, and it's called Beyond the Diagnosis. So I'm going to introduce Patricia Welton. Patricia, if you'd like to come up. Patricia, the mother of two children with Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, began working in this space by creating a new business model of working by state. Her award-winning work in state-level advocacy grew to the national advocacy efforts, and today, Patricia proudly works to successfully use art as a powerful tool to create awareness and increase innovation into orphan and neglected diseases. So welcome, Patricia. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Um, my name is Patricia Welton, and um, I am the CEO and founder of Rare Disease United Found I'm, God, beyond the diagnosis, we changed our name. Um, but more importantly, I'm the mother to two children with the rarely diagnosed disease, hypermobile Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. Uh, we are so excited to be here today because we are going to celebrate Rare Disease Day at the NIH by unveiling a portrait of Amber, who you see here. Uh, the portrait was painted by one of our participating artists, Hoda Leal. Um, you know, our mission, for those of you that don't know, our mission at Beyond the Diagnosis is to advance medicine through art. Compassionate, generous artists from all over the world have donated their time and their talent to paint portraits of children with a rare disease. Those portraits then go on to research institutes, medical hospitals, medical schools all over the country, and today, Oh, it's, it's late now, but we've already unveiled a portrait for Rare Disease Day in Ireland. So you get to share with us our first international unveiling. Uh, Beyond the Diagnosis uh, was, has created unprecedented awareness for rare diseases, reaching tens of millions of medical professionals, researchers, and the general public. We were featured on CBS Sunday morning where six million viewers learned about our difficulties, our resilience, and our love for our rare children. We were featured in The Lancet, the world's oldest and most prestigious medical journal. This exhibit has captured the hearts of every single person who sees it. We have begun showing the exhibit at disease-specific events, not just on, at medical schools and non-disease-specific events. Uh, I was honored to be able to attend um, the unveiling of a hemophilia portrait at a hemophilia conference, and that was our first non um, that was our first disease-specific event. I was amazed to see the response from the community there that was there to you know, for their concert was their conference was specific to hemophilia, but they were just as interested in the other portraits as they were in the hemophilia portrait. This exhibit brings us together as a community. It takes us beyond the disease to the thing that matters most to us: our children, our love, and our fight for our children's health is what drives all of us. Demand for Beyond the Diagnosis has grown 500% in just three years. 500% without us reaching out to a single venue. I know you guys think I'm working really hard, but people are coming to us. I have not reached out to a venue in three years. You know, we've struggled to find funding for this exhibit. Um, it's an unusual way to uh, advance medicine um, using art. But I am not going to stop fighting because I believe that our children, our rare children, are masterpieces. I want to thank the families who participate. I'm humbled to be entrusted with your children, and I promise you, that my devotion is complete. I want to thank the artists who don't just put their talent into these portraits, they put their hearts. What has happened here, what has happened with this exhibit, 
is magic. I wish I could read to you every email, every comment I've ever heard about what this exhibit means to the people who see it. So um, thank you so much. We're so grateful to the NIH for having us here today. We're grateful for Amber and her family for coming, and we can't wait to show you her portrait. Good morning, everyone. My name is Stephanie Feinberg, and I work with the family programming team at the Children's Inn at NIH, a nonprofit located directly across from the NIH Clinical Center that provides free lodging and a wide range of supportive services to families and children and young adults who participate in clinical research trials at the NIH. I'm honored to be here today with all of you on this 2019 NIH Rare Disease Day. As a person with a rare disease myself, Rare Disease Day holds a very special place in my heart. I'm even more honored to introduce you to a wonderful girl and her loving family, nine-year-old Amber, Letty and Miguel of San Jose, California. When Amber started work walking at 13 months, her family noticed she could not step properly on her left heel. She fell often and for no apparent reason. Amber's pediatrician suggested the little girl would grow out of it, but instead it got worse. The family went from doctor to doctor and ended up seeing a neurologist who ran genetic tests on Amber. The test came back with difficult news. Amber has a highly rare neurodegenerative disease called giant axonal neuropathy, GAN for short, which is similar to a child, child form of ALS. There was no treatment or cure for GAN, but the family learned about a gene therapy trial at the National Institute for Neurological Diseases and Stroke and immediately were ready to participate. The day Miguel and Letty found out Amber was accepted into the trial, they celebrated. They've been coming to the NIH and staying at the Children's Inn for two years now. As part of her treatment, Amber received an injection of the healthy copy of the GAN gene exactly one year ago. Right now, the family is staying at the Children's Inn for two weeks to follow up, uh, for follow-up testing at the NIH. The great hope is that the revolutionary gene therapy trial can stop Amber's disease from progressing. Amber loves coming to the NIH and has made fast friends with her doctors and all the children and staff at the Children's Inn. She's best buddies with our therapy dog, Zilly, and it's just a joy to have participate in our family programming activities. Amber had the chance to meet First Lady Melania Trump again this year when she visited the Children's Inn for the second year in a row for Valentine's Day. Amber was so excited that the First Lady said she even remembered her from last year. Amber is an impressive and joyful young lady, and she is quite literally leading the way for all of us. Amber is only the 10th patient in the world to participate in this exciting gene therapy trial. She is incredibly brave, and all of us at the Children's Inn are so proud to play a small role in Amber's amazing journey. And now I think I speak for all of us when I say we're very excited to see her portrait unveiled on this very special day. Amber, are you ready? Okay. <laughs> 